Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to today's bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and yes folks, they definitely do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's bonus, shall we? Alright everybody, today's subscriber is Sheila. And she has an encounter that she is going to share with us. Sheila, thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. It really means a lot to me. Um, now, as you know, I'm just going to hand the floor over to you so you can share your encounter. Just pretty much picture it. Me and you are in a car and I just told you my encounter and now you're sharing yours with me. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, on this day that it happened, it was actually, I remember the date. It was 9-11, 2019. Um, my husband, myself and a friend of ours were out scouting an area looking for some tracks and you know, what we could get into two o'clock in the afternoon. Never, ever thought about, you know, having anything happen at two o'clock during the day. Nothing was going on. You know, it was just a quiet day. Um, we were walking around the ridge area. My husband and um, my friend saw some rubbings on a tree at the bottom of a ridge. And they stayed down there and was looking at it and, you know, trying to look around, see if there was some more stuff going on. So and I started to the top of the ridge because I already had my momentum and I just didn't want to stop. So I went to the top and I looked down. Um, our cars were parked way down below and I was thinking to myself, you know, we should have come out further down or, or something like that. Um, and then I heard a sound, some kind of sound. And when I heard it, I took a step back and looked at my four o'clock where the sound come from. And when I looked about 25 yards away, I saw something. But, you know, you're trying to look, what, what am I seeing? Is that, you know, you know, I seen the tree. But then this thing leaned to the left of the tree. And I'm looking at it, and the whole time I'm thinking, I'm not really seeing what I'm seeing. This is, you know, this isn't right. I'm not, I'm not seeing this. My eyes are lying to me. Um, but, but he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I'm 110% sure of what I saw. It doesn't matter if anybody believes me or not, so I'm good with it. Um, he looked at me, and I looked at him. He still had his hands on the tree. And the one thing in my mind thinking, you know, holy crap, his right shoulder was still on the other side of the tree and he was leaning out looking to the left that was how big it was um it looked like a humongous man wearing a like a cinnamon color dark red burgundy kind of fur coat his face um looked the color of clay i didn't see any hair on his face whatsoever i seen his eyes his eyes was dark looking at me um and he knew that I saw him. That was the thing. So I was always in my mind wondering, did he do that on purpose? He got my attention to look at him. Right. Um, so I'm looking at him and I, I call for my husband. Um, and he thought I found a track or something. So they were taking their time and I, I thought they were closer to me than they were. And then I kind of hollered again, you know, for him. And he knew something was wrong. And when I, when I yelled the second time, Whatever it was, and I know what it was, it just dropped down and, and, and just took off like a big puff of smoke. Um, so they made it to the top of the ridge, and we ran over there and showed them where it was. And you could see tracks from when it dropped down and where it to when it uh, 
went off. It was like on all fours. It just tore off um, down the ridge. So it took me about two days. You know, I was trying to convince myself, okay, maybe it was a bear. Maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. But I, but I know what it was. And I know it meant for me to see it. So, and, and that's how it happened. I never smelled anything. Um, I never felt scared. I felt more adrenaline, you know, because I was just shaking all over just from the adrenaline rush. Um, and where it was, it was on a decline, you know, where it went down. So if I would have said how tall it was, I would I would have guessed at least at least seven foot tall. Okay. Now, when it hit all fours, were you able to see, like, where its top of its back was? Can you give an estimate of how how tall it was on all fours? I never, no, I just seen it when it just, it was like a puff of smoke is the only thing I can describe. It was just okay. poof. It was it just happened so fast. But when we got to where it was, you could see where it had dug in to the ground and, and right. just tore off. Hmm. All right. Now, the noise you mentioned, what was that? How'd that noise sound? You know, I, I know it wasn't a, like a whoop or anything. Right. It was just a noise. And, um, well, after talking to Victor, I I believe that it made some kind of clicking sound with its mouth, which makes sense. I've, I've heard that before. After that, yeah. uh, that that's what it what it done to get my attention. You know, so he knew that I was up there by myself. I mean, I I didn't have my cell phone with me. I left it in my vehicle. I usually carry a gun because mainly I'm afraid of the wild hogs around here. Right. Um, didn't have that. I was totally up there by myself and. Uh, I never thought it even once about a cell phone or anything else when I saw it. Yeah, there's a, yeah. another female subscriber who shared her encounter, and she described the clicking as like the old metal clickers that kids would play with back in like the 50s and 60s. The It was kind of like an right. aluminum clicker, click-clack thing. Um, so that makes a lot of sense, and it's definitely a creepy creepy encounter because it, it, it wanted you to see it. Normally they don't want you to see them, you know, unless, so. Well, I, I assume, I don't know. I've heard that they've had, like they have sentries out during the day watching out. Uh, maybe it was curious. Maybe, I, I don't know, but I would not have really looked that way for any reason, you know, because we've done walk all over the area and, you know, they were just down there looking at the tree and I was looking at the car or looking straight in front of me. So, Right. Yeah, it, it wanted me to see it, I feel like. Definitely, definitely. Well, you sent some amazing audio. Um, I'm still, for some reason, the way that it sent you sent it to me, I can only play it on my computer or my phone, but I can't put it into video. So I'm trying to be working on that. Hopefully I can convert it tonight and combine it with your video to um, with this interview. Um, okay. I'm going to send it to Victor, like I said, when he returns home from his hunt. But That will be awesome. I'm looking forward to hearing from you again because you've got a group of friends that have heard and seen things too as well. So that will be exciting for me too. Okay, great. So, Well, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day um, and sharing your encounter with us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoy listening to you all the time. That's that's awesome. Is there anything that you'd like to say to everybody before we uh, end this? Um, I would just tell everybody to keep getting out there, going camping. Um, just just be aware of your surroundings. Don't think it's just you know just the deer or the bear. Just just be uh, knowledgeable and and stay safe. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So guys, at the end of the phone call Sheila and I were talking and she was talking about her friends who have seen um, and heard a lot of things like I said at the end and she decided to share something else that happened and um, she didn't feel like it was significant enough to include in the interview but I was like what so you were coming home from work late at night or was it morning it was at nine. It was about ten thirty. Okay, all right. So you're, uh, is it a country road that you were on? It was. It's a very rural road. Yes, okay. very dark. And I and I was watching really good for deer because deer are so bad. You know, 
run out in front of you. And, and that's, that was my concern. Right. And so I seen something on the left side of the road, you know, but it, it just like come from nowhere and it hit the middle of the road. That's the only time it touched the road. And then it went straight, hit and like went straight up like a, it's probably about a 40, 50 degree embankment went straight up. And it just, it was moving so fast. It was, it was just amazing how fast it moved and how much it could cover. Um, and I drive a, a lifted vehicle. So it came up about halfway of my grill. Um, and it was black and it was just pitch black what I saw. And it was like an outline of a, uh, I would say a German Shepherd, but it was, you know, way bigger than German Shepherd. And I remember it had a long bushy tail. Right. That that kind of like was the last flowing thing I saw. So in in her lift, and then I asked. I said, "Well, your lifted vehicle is, you know, <clears throat> how big was this thing?" And she's like, well, "It was bigger than four and a half five feet." And I was like, "You didn't feel it necessary <laughs> to share that with us?" And she started laughing. So she has a friend with many more encounters, and I am looking forward to this. Um, Sheila, thank you for sharing that with us again. Really You're very welcome. It. All right. So here is the vocalizations that Sheila and her husband captured that night. Like I said prior, uh, she has a friend who also is in North Georgia who has experienced quite a bit. And I'm hoping to be able to chat with them very soon. And maybe you guys can hear that chat if they agree to let me record it. Here's the audio, guys. So you can definitely hear the coyotes in the background, but then there's another vocalization and it's just a frenzy of 
noise. I mean, it, it's... While I was listening to that, I imagined myself in the woods and having that go around me. And just... It's, it's terrifying. And, um, you know, I've heard... I've heard coyote, I've heard wolves, I've heard koi dog personally because of where I live in New York. And yeah, they sound very, very scary to, to hear. It's very scary to hear. But that other vocalization, there's multiple that are not the coyote, is what my ears were focused on. And a couple of them almost sound hyena-like. I don't know. I mean, this is just friggin' creepy. Anyway, that's the interview with Sheila and the audio. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Today's first encounter, October 4th, 2001, Tyler, Texas. A little while back, I saw a Bigfoot in my backyard. He stood about seven to eight feet tall, weighed eight to a thousand pounds. It was black, hairy all over, and smelled worse than a skunk. It had arms that looked like an ape, that looked prehistoric. It was very shocking to see. Most recently, a teenage boy claimed to have seen a Bigfoot in Woodville. My son has told me one night something that Stunk came close to the house by the bedroom where he was sleeping. Whatever it was moaned and groaned, and he could hear it breathing. My son lives in the same house where I saw the Bigfoot in Woodville, Texas. Today's second encounter, Walker County, Texas. I'm a little unsure of what I saw that day, but it certainly freaked me out enough that I felt the urge to look into it a bit further. It happened September of 2001 on the county line of Walker in Montgomery County, southeast Texas. At the time, I was living in the college community of College Station, Texas, and I'd commute the hour and a half from home to my work in Conroy. Due to the drive and time I needed to be at work, I often left long before the sun was rising. On the 11th of September, I left home at about 4.30 and headed to work. The quickest, but not easiest, route leads some rather empty country and part of the Sam Houston State Forest, which borders Lake Conroy. I was on FM Farm to Market Road, 1375, which cuts through the forest and over part of the lake. I had just crossed the bridge heading east when I decided to pull to the side of the road. I'm a heavy coffee drinker, and for obvious reasons, the rural nature of the spot made it an easy stopping point. Where I had stopped, years of fishermen had worn a path down from the roadbed to the lake's edge. I had just started to step onto the path when I noticed a very heavy, musky odor. I wish now I would have made a point to stop and take another breath. But at the time, I was thinking just that it was a really strange skunk odor. I had taken maybe two or three more steps when the hairs on my neck literally stood on end, and to this day I swear I heard a woofing noise. Not like a dog does, but kind of like that, and as if something was telling me I was not where I needed to be. I stopped, and that is when, to my immediate right, something stood up and grabbed the branches of a small tree right next to my head and began to shake. I had left my lights on and at the truck and thought they were not shining in my direction and the reflection was enough to get a general idea. It stood well over a foot taller than me and was still below me on the slope of the embankment. I'm 5'8", so I would think it was well over 7 feet. It had dark colored hair, a rather large head, and I couldn't see its nose or eyes due to the shadow. It had long arms, I think, and large hands. I'm a little unsure of that because I can't remember if I really looked at its hands or not. The stench was amazing enough to make my eyes water. 
It began making this squealing bark kind of noise, and in two or three strides was past me and headed to the road. I don't know why it didn't turn and head back into the forest, but it didn't. I turned to watch, and as it started across the road, a light-colored truck came around the bend in the road headed west. I don't know if the driver saw what I did, but I can remember the red lights of the brake shining, so he or she must have seen something. The creature moved up the hill on the other side of the road and went into the pine trees there. I got back into my truck, got the heck out of Dodge, so to speak. I've only told one other person about this because, to be honest, I don't want to look like some idiot seeing a ghost in the middle of the woods in Texas. Today's third encounter, Smith County, Texas. Okay, me and my friends were fishing down at the creek by our house. And we were tired and decided to leave. So we all started walking back up at the road from the wooded area. And our friend said that he had forgotten the bait. So we ran down to the creek to get the bait. Then he came running back screaming and said he saw a giant white hairy thing picking up leaves and dropping them. So we were all freaked out. So like three of us went back down to see what he was talking about. And as we were lock walking along the creek, a big hairy white man-like thing jumped out from behind a tree in front of us, looked at us, and jumped in the creek, which is far too wide for an average human to jump, and then ran off. Today's fourth encounter, Hunt County, Texas. Several Bigfoot was observed with binoculars in a deeply wooded area. They were dodging in and out of a tree line like a game of cat and mouse with each other. Thought it was a hoax being played on me and just watched them move closer in my direction. We also heard some cackling noise in the distance that I likened to hyenas or coyote. Separate from these noises were dogs barking in the area. Horses in the area that became real jumpy. After walking into the wooded area, we disturbed a large creature that let out a very deep, loud growl that I've never heard an animal make before. And we heard a loud thud, like a heavy animal jumping. Shots from a 45 ACP handgun were fired in the vicinity, followed by heavy footsteps and branches and brush being disturbed by the same heavy animal making a hasty retreat. We went into the same distance and reached the creek bed area. There was dead silence and we noticed some smudging prints near the water's edge that didn't hear a splash or any other noise. We got the feeling that we were being watched and feared that whatever we were following had doubled back on us and might corner us with our backs to the water. By this time it was darker outside but in the more open areas you could see without a flashlight. As we were leaving the area, we heard very heavy footsteps and stomping, along with tree branches crashing to the ground, that I likened to a bulldozer without an engine rushing behind us. We got to a clearing and turned to face whatever it was, and saw a huge, silver-grayish colored Bigfoot just at the tree line. It was in a 10 o'clock position from where we were, and it stomping the bluff charge or mocking charge at us and throwing branches. The trees in this area were middle growth to mature trees, and he appeared to be male by aggressive nature and sheer size. was rattling these trees with no problem. We squatted down to get a better look and to take aim at him in case he charged. He stayed within the tree line and rocked back and forth like a gorilla. The only sounds that we heard at this point were the stomping and the branches being thrown at us. He was about 20 yards away from us and a very large branch were coming very close. I had the gun aimed right at him and I am convinced that he had a better sighting on me than I had on him because he reacted just like a squirrel on a tree does. I was thinking about taking a shot at him when suddenly from my 12 o'clock position we noticed another Bigfoot that was shorter than he was and wasn't so thick up top and appeared to be a female because of her actions. 
The larger one, at the 10 o'clock position, was at least 8 or 9 feet tall and very massive in the shoulder area. The smaller one, the 12 o'clock position, was over 7 feet tall and was standing there rocking back and forth, but not as violently as the larger one. It seemed like she was following his lead and waiting to see what he would do next. As long as I pointed the gun in their direction or shined a flashlight at them, they stayed behind the tree and tried to hide their face. It became a sort of hide-and-seek as I shined the light in their faces. I did catch a glimpse, and the face appeared more sloth-like from what I saw. They had big heads. The eyes were dark-looking, despite the growing darkness and flashlights. On one, I did notice a sort of frowned expression on the face. It almost looked sad. At this point, I couldn't shoot because I wasn't sure that it still wasn't a hoax, although I understood what I was looking at. Also, it almost seemed like they could almost understand things more than the other animals. I won't say they were thinking and reasoning, but it was as if they were upset that I had shot at them and was asking me why the larger one at the 10 o'clock position became more agitated and wanted us out of the area and began to stomp more and more. So we decided to slowly back out of the area with the gun pointed in their direction and left. As soon as we got out of the area, we heard what I likened to a loud shouting type of horse whining shout that I labeled their victory call for running us out of the area. I had a camera hanging from my neck, but didn't touch the camera until I got home and noticed it hanging from my neck. I was very much afraid and wasn't sure if I would make it out of there alive or not. Today's fifth encounter, Wise County, Texas. Back in March of 2001, around 4.30 in the morning, on my way home from work on the back road, something crossed in front of my headlights. This thing had long hair, long arms between 7 to 8 feet tall and traveling fast. It crossed the road in front of me in two or three steps. It stepped over the fence and went into the coastal field out of my vision. It was grayish in color, but everything in the area is covered in rock crusher dust, so it could have been any color. This thing was not as hefty as in pictures, but it was tall with long arms. It stood on two feet like a human with long arms and didn't run, but was lumbering across the road. I told others at my work about this, and the other two men saw the same thing on April of 2001 about a mile from where I saw it. My boss saw it when he was a young man and stated it screamed like he had never heard before and couldn't mimic the sound it made. We were hesitant to speak about this, but what I saw that morning was something I have never seen before. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment free. Please, everyone, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends, these creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.